and it came in harmony. Father, inhabit our praises today. Touch us, Lord, right now. In unison, you you heard that prayer from your kids, from your from your babies. Tonight, tonight, let the wind blow on us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Speak live. But do you believe the Bible? Yes. Then you know we win. Yes. We win. We just have to have the faith to walk victoriously. Amen. So many people walk walk around and, and they're so beat down. And, and you say, how you been? And it's like, oh, I've been, I've been kind of sick for about two months now. And I reckon I'll be sick for another three months. I'm like, that's, people actually say that and they think that and they speak that into their life. It happens. When you speak, the angels are taking notes. The demons are taking notes. It happens. We, got, we are evangelists. That's right. But what's it going to look like if we walk up to somebody and just be like, like can I help you? I was like, Jesus loves you. Like, what do you mean? Well, I go to this church down here. We praise God and Jesus loves you. And I got a headache. No, you got to be a happy evangelist. Oh my God, I got it. You walk in a room and say, I want, I want what that guy's got. I want that light. What is that light on you? What is going on in his life? Or even people that knew you, that knew the old you before you died. I said, like, damn, what, what's up with G? He, he done get crazy on us. He done walk and got Jesus shirt on. What's going on with him? Ain't smoking no cigarette no more? Throw it away? Put a bounce in your step. Even, even when you're in a bad place. Because when Paul was in prison, it was in a Roman prison. It was about 30 years after the crucifixion of Christ. That's when he wrote Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. He said, I therefore, prisoner of the Lord, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of your calling to which you have been called. So we are biblically mandated to walk in victory. We have to walk in a walk that's worthy of what we were called to. You can't, you can't walk around with your head down. You, you may have got the worst news in the world, but you gotta, you got to buck it up and swallow it and go because it ain't about this life. We're putting our treasures in the next life in heaven. No matter where you are in life, God, God has you there for a purpose. He has you there for a reason. It might not seem like it because God's ways are not our ways. Everything that happens to you is, is brought down from heaven. All things are good happen in, in, in your life. All things good happen in your life for, for those that love God. I probably messed that all up, but I would rather somebody tell me the meaning of a verse than to memorize it and get it word for word. Because even, even when we we're in the house, somebody would get up and try to say a verse. They say, I really don't know how it goes, but this is what it means. I said, and that's what it's all about. And a parent can memorize verses. You memorize, you know what it means. You find out what it means is when you got something. God knows your life. He knows why you're there. He put you there. If you say, God, I'm in a bad place. I'm, my, my cousin was in a wreck and he's not going to, I don't think he's going to make it. And God's like, you don't think I already knew that? But thanks for telling me. Now, that I'm not, now I know you know it. Now we've spoke about it. You get to Atlanta. And you get there and lay hands on him. Amen. There's a reason. There's a reason this happened. There's a reason you prayed that. There's a reason I put that in your life. And there's a reason you have this weekend off. Now go lay hands on him. And I have a church in Atlanta you can visit while you're there. Right. Amen. Amen. That's our sister church. Because if you know God is omni, and that means he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipotent. He can do anything. If we know God is that, then what, what does it matter what we think? If God knows everything, does anything, what does it matter what we do? Why do we make a difference? 
the, the thing is God created a thing called love and love is worthless unless if it's forced on you it's not love at all stop crying you messed me up the reason I love this ministry because the people that come here there's no one sitting here that's in here doing hard time there's no one sitting here marking off a checkbook or check marks saying, oh, I've been to church two hours this week. Every last person that comes here is somebody that's hungry. Amen. Every last person that comes here is somebody that's thirsty. Amen. Every last person that comes here knows they're sitting in the splash section at SeaWorld. Because when that, when that Holy Ghost sits, every one of you is going to get wet. There is no back row here. Matter of fact, there is no back row in the parking lot. Anywhere in this parking lot, you can get hit. Matter of fact, just driving by. Holy Spirit, get them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. It's here. John the Baptist said, Behold, the, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He meant it's at hand. It's right here. It's parallel with us. It's not that we have to strive and, and go way ahead in the future and be something. All you have to do is reach up and open the door. O open it up and pour it out on yourself. It's here. It's not that we have to strive for it. Just release it. Because Jesus said, I'm going to pray to send you a helper. That was the Holy Spirit. He was praying to God to send us the Holy Spirit. So if, when Jesus prays for something for us, it's there. It's automatic. It's answered. We don't have to pray for the Holy Spirit. It's already with you. It's always with you. Oh, just take a deep breath. You feel that breeze? That's the Holy Spirit. Anytime the wind blows on you, that's God speaking to you. He speaks to me just like that. Whether it be three in the morning, three in the afternoon. I can remember one time I walked outside, and I don't even know why I was I was cleaning out my drawer, and I found this letter this week, and I opened it up. And it was from 2019. And I had been up praying and reading the Bible. And, and I wrote this down like, I'm, like a little journal or something. And it said, I went outside and I, and I said, Lord, if, if this is real, if you're real, give me a sign. And, the, the, and I wrote down the thing that I got back was, do not, do not cast a fleece, before, a fleece before me. A fleece is something where you say, God, this way or that way, I want to answer from, from something specific. And I said, okay. And I went back in and I started reading the Bible and I started dozing off. And something said, something, when I say something, you know what it was. The Holy Spirit said, get up and go out there again. So I went on the steps and I was half asleep and I looked up. And inside he said, walk out across the yard and look to the east. And I'm like, no, it's dew out here. And I got my socks on. Yes, sir. And I saw, I saw I walk right out through the grass and I walked to the yard and I turned around. I said, God, I love you. And a shooting star went across the sky. And I was like, whoa! And instantly something in my ear said, you didn't just see that. That did not just happen. Oh, it did happen. And I, and I felt like Abraham talking to God about saving Sodom and Gomorrah because I bargained with him again. I said, God, you know, you know there's part of me telling me this, that that didn't just happen. I said, can you do it again? And he is my witness. Not even the same part of the sky. Maybe, like if I point here, this part of the sky, another star shot. I said, thank you, Jesus. And I just sprinted back in the house. And I've never, I've never questioned him again. Because over a shooting star, well, not one, but two. As soon as both times I said, I love you, Jesus, and the shooting star came. So I'm not I'm not gonna test him anymore. Because the next one the next one might come my way. Like I told you you could ask him about that. I love everybody here because nobody's here to, to play church. Nobody's here playing Mickey Mouse church. We're not here to play cornhole. We're here to learn about Jesus and, and, and learn about the Holy Ghost and what he can do for us and what he will do for us. And that's how we're going to win souls. Churches that bring people in 
and don't lay hands on them and don't fill them with the Holy Spirit. They're just filling seats for that day. No. They're not changing the world. That's not what God wants. That's not what Jesus wanted us to do. And if everybody says, oh, you're in the deliverance ministry. You're a healing ministry. I'm, the, I'm none of those things. I'm just in ministry. Jesus wasn't in a healing ministry, a deliverance ministry. He just did it like it is. And that's all we do. We are followers of Christ. And we do what he did. And if somebody gets delivered, so be it. If somebody gets healed, that's what we're supposed to do. We raise somebody from the dead, let's do it. If a snake runs across here, I'm going to pick him up and sling him out in that parking lot. And if I get bit, I'm going to look like Paul. I'm going to shake him off into the fire. So let's do this thing, guys. Because we serve a living God. We serve a God that shows up. We show a God that shows up and lays, and lays his power out before you. Gives you all the power of, of the mighty God inside of you. And when God calls us, we know his name. We know his voice and we follow him. We follow no other voice. And you know you're here for a reason because Jesus said, no man comes to me unless the Father draws him. So if you're sitting here, if you're, even if you're listening online, if you're not sure, you're here for a reason. You're listening to this for a reason because the Father has drawn you here. And he's got a use for you. But you know what? There's more. You can't just show up. You, you can't just show up at the, um, the wedding, the banquet. The king sent out the invitations. And then finally, after, after three tries, he said, just bring anybody in. And they showed up. And the king walked across, walked around the people, and he noticed one man that wasn't wearing the wedding attire. He kicked him out in the street. Into the gnashing of teeth, into the outer darkness. Friends, we've got to do more than just show up. There's more to it. Because so many people have just showed up. And they never put on the garment. They never put on the armor of God. And they're sitting there lukewarm. And they will get spewed from the mouth. And they will be thrown into the darkness. And they will ask, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast devils out of your name? I never knew you. That's one thing you don't want to hear because that's the end of the conversation. It's over. By the time you hear that, because you will be bowing in. Because you will be part of the every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess. But I never knew you. I lived my whole life for you, Lord. I never knew you. You never came to me. We never had a relationship. It's crazy because I've, I've, it's been drilled in my head since I was a little kid. Have a personal relationship with Christ. Have a personal relationship with Christ. And some of those preachers, I believe they did. Some of the Baptist preachers that I grew up under, I think they were the most loving, fruit-bearing people I ever met in my life. But they failed. They didn't teach me how to do it. They didn't teach me how to get filled with the Holy Ghost. They failed at their job. I hope I think they're in heaven. They can't. They can't not be because they were such good people. But I don't know if, if they ever truly put on the uniform. I don't want to get caught without it. But with the calling, there's a price that we have to pay. Like Paul said, we have to walk in a manner worthy of our calling. We got to put off the old attitude. Put off the old mindset. Put the victim mentality behind us. That voice that you hear and say, the whole world is against me. You are a soldier. Put on the full armor. Because once you speak that out of your mouth, once you say, once you get this victim mentality, once you start speaking that, it's going to happen to you. You are a child of God. You walk in his shadow. You abide in his shadow. It doesn't matter what's coming against you. There is a pressure among the people. And it makes you want to constantly say life is hard. Yes, it, it, it may be. But if you, the more you keep saying life is hard, it's going to stay hard. When you say life is hard, but we got this. 
Life is tough, but you know what? There's a better day coming. Hallelujah. I want to see you. I want to look upon your face on the streets of glory. It's coming. When you stand in front of him, you want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. No, I never knew you. Think about it. Paul said, put off the old man. When you came to Christ, the old man died. When you got baptized in the spirit, you came up as a new person. You came up in the form of Jesus. The word baptized in Jesus' day was a normal word for everybody. It wasn't, it wasn't a religious word. Or it wasn't about scripture. Baptized is what they did for their garments. All the clothes came in, came in like yellow. And they would baptize the clothes which meant submerge and take the form of. So that was a normal word. So when, when John said, when John the Baptist said, we're going to baptize you, they knew, they knew that they were going to get submerged in water and they were going to take the form of something. So th they didn't have to explain what baptism meant. It was a normal word. But then Jesus came along and said, and, well, John the Baptist said, well, I baptize you in water, but the one who's coming after me is going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Like, whoa, I mean, we're, we're just not getting used to the water thing. In the fire? I got to get baptized in fire? Everybody says, I want to get baptized in fire, but you know your life's going to change. Your life's going to change when you get baptized in fire. It doesn't feel good. It burns because it burns off things in your life. That's why people get, up, get on their knees and cry so hard because their flesh is paying the price. Their flesh is, is getting burnt. The evil burns off. And when you come out gold, you come out pure. When you come out of that water, you're as close to God as you've ever been. No separation. Because you are created in the likeness of God. we got to put on the mindset that David had. I don't want to be one of the Israelites that heard Goliath speak and did nothing. I want to be David. I want to be like, give me, give me, let me get to the front. If you can't fight him, I don't care. I got God. God's fighting this battle for me. I got this. I don't want to be one of the ten spies that came back from the from the promised land and said, oh, we can't take it. We're like grasshoppers. They're too big. They just came back with an evil report. I want to be the two that came back saying, let's take it right now. Let's take it now. Let's go tonight. Let's go get that promised land. This hour. God's for us. Who can be against us? Don't come back with the bad report with a bunch of cheap excuses as to why they can't possess the land. The Bible doesn't give us excuses. It doesn't give us excuses on why we can't get our victory. The Bible shows us how to get the victory and how we can beat the devil every single time. It may sting, it may hurt, it is going to hurt. But you know what? He doesn't know. He's not omniscient. He doesn't know your mind. When he throws a dart at you and you know it hits you and you don't even use your poker face. It's good. Just keep praying for somebody. Like, did that even get him? Because they, they don't have endless firepower. They're going to they're gonna move on to somebody else if they, they know the effect. Just because we know how the story ends doesn't change the fact that we still have to walk through the valley. I was thinking about the game Battleship. Y'all remember that game where you put your battleships, your, your ships all over, and then the other guys got his, and you start kind of shooting in the dark? That's, and I can see the enemy. I can see the demons, me and the demons playing against each other, and they're sh sh shooting me. And I say, miss. And they're like, uh, L15, miss. And that's your life, and they keep missing. But sooner or later, there's going to be a hit. There's a B-52. That's a bomber, but yeah. Hit. So what, what's the next move? What's the enemy's next move when they get a hit? They're going to focus right back on there. They're going to, we just got a hit. Let's go back to that church and try, try again because we got a hit there. Oh, we just got a hit. Let's go to that family. Let's go to that household because we had success there last time. Let's, let's, come on, everybody. Let's, let's bring it on. So once you show that you got a hit, know that the next one's coming. But if we defeat them, the next one ain't going to come. They're going to move on. I, I play games with my 11-year-old daughter. 
and you never, ever, 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 ever gonna win. Cause she changes the rules as she goes. No matter what we're playing, she's changing the rules. And I said, you know what? This, this is probably how the, the enemy feels playing, playing against God. Because just when he thinks he's got you in checkmate, God will change the rules. He'll be like, oh, let's turn this table. Oh, it's my move, checkmate. But you can't do that because I'm God. I can do whatever I want. Check, turn the tables on the enemy. If you feel like you're in checkmate, turn the tables and say, no, I, you're in checkmate. I'm not in checkmate. I got God on my side. I, you see this shadow I'm living in? That's God's shadow. You're in checkmate, buddy. Skippy. Just because we are guaranteed victory doesn't mean we won't face these life challenges. Are you a champion? Are you a champion? Are you a champion? You can't be a champion unless you win some battles. You're not going to skirt around the battles and become champion. We have to walk through this battle. We don't get to fly through it. We don't get to transpose through it. We don't, get, we don't even get to run through it. It says we walk through the valley with pride. We walk knowing that we're protected. We have the shield. We got the uniform on. Ephesians 3.13 says, Therefore I ask you, do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. If you have something or someone in your life, a, a thorn in your side perhaps, something that you've been dealing with your whole life or that you may have to deal with the rest of your life. It is there for a greater purpose, something that we don't even understand, something we don't even know why it's there. But I promise you, it's there for a reason. And, and, and I think about some, some personal people in my life that have to live with things. And just, just to get ready to go somewhere, just to come to a church outing, they have to do so much more than we have to do. They have, just, just to get the normal blessing, they have to do so much more to get here. There's so much more sacrifice that goes in, that, that we don't know of. And it's the other way around. As pastors, we, we sacrifice some things. We don't make anything from this. We don't, we don't collect money for ourselves. Anything that comes goes right back to the church. We both have full-time jobs. But we love Christ and we know there, there's a better thing awaiting for us. Because God's opening doors, we're not, we're, we're not gonna not go through them. Because we got too many people with us now. Because when we go through doors, you come through with us. And they're opening, they're opening fast. I mean, so fast that I, my anxiety that I don't have, and my fear that I don't have, and my cotton mouth that I don't have, tries to show up. Get behind me, Satan. But these things that you deal with, they, they, they are your glory. God knows your trials. God knows your tribulations. God knows what you have to go through. He sees it. He's marking everything down. He knows your heart. You made it. You, you made it through all these tribulations, through these hard times. Everything that said you're not going to make it, you're here. But things are things are working out. Look at look what God can do. Look what He is doing. Matthew twenty sixteen says, "The last will be first, and the first will be last." So when that gate opens up in heaven, and, and we start coming through, God's going to be like, "Hold on, come up front. You in the back? Come here. I want you to come through the gate first. Nobody ever even noticed me. I don't care. I did. Come on. And when we sit down to eat, and you, and you immediately go up to the kids' table to sit down, and Jesus is going to look over and say, no, you're sitting next to me. Because you're the one that I love. You're the one that I gave these thorns to that you still pressed through, and you came through for me. You are a king. You're at the table with me. The first will be last, and the last shall be first. We just gotta, we got tests in our life. And sometimes we, we regret the tests that are coming. And, and like, oh no, there's gonna be a test. But think, everybody here, 
has, has, has come up to a test that they were looking forward to because it changed their lives. It, it changed your freedom. It changed what you can do. And when you were 16 years old, we all took a driving test. We were looking forward to that test. That's what we got to do. We look forward to tests that God's give, given us. There's a storm on the rise. Let's do it. Because you know what? Once I get through that storm, the other side of the water is going to be so blue and clear. The boat's going to be clean. All the rain washed it off. Hallelujah. There's going to be a big rainbow. That's what I'm looking forward to. Bring the storms on because I'm getting through it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus didn't tell me to go crazy and freak out and start screaming, Jesus, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? He said, what's the last thing I told you? Go across the lake. He went in the boat took a nap. If Jesus is taking a nap, I might go lay down next to him. Like, I'm taking that with you. Because if this boat goes down, I'm right next to the person I want to be with anyways. So hallelujah. If you are a believer, you have the Holy Spirit. Everybody here believes. I know you do. Because this isn't this is one of those churches that they make you come. You come here because you, you believe. You know something's going to happen. You know God shows up. Because we know, we know he's only present, but he shows up, shows up. He inhabits our praises. When we praise, he inhabits them. We enthrone him. That means he pulls a chair up. We put a chair up. God sits down and just looking at us. Look at my babies. Look at them go. That, that's what I want. If, man, if they only knew what I had picked out for them. If they only knew what kind of disciples they're going to be. And this one right here. This right here is going to raise a dead person. What? Just, just hang with it. Run with it. Get baptized with the Spirit. It's, it's not about you getting more Holy Spirit. It's about the Holy Spirit getting more of you. Because you have 100% of it in you. You have the same Spirit in you that raised Jesus from the dead. The same Spirit in you that parted the Red Sea. That's in you. You have all that power. You just open yourself up to it. But you can have it. Miss. John 7, 38 says, He who believes on me out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Give me some of that water. That's what I want. Tonight, friends, we're going to get that living water. It's going to come out of it. If you've never felt the Holy Ghost, it's here tonight. Jesus already prayed for it. The helper is here. All you have to do is receive it. Just let down your guard. John the Baptist said, I must decrease so he can increase. That's all you have to do. You decrease and let him increase. And take off. Let that old man die. Those have Any habit that's sticking around with you, make a decision tonight. It's done. Because the more you give, the more he's going to give you. Your breakthrough is going to come through you reading the word and your praises and your sacrifices. And the, the, the most simple form of sacrifice is raising your hands. We didn't, you didn't know that's a sacrifice. That's a sacrifice. As soon as you raise your hands, God's, God's about to move on you. That, that's, I started reading the Bible. And I started getting a hunger for it. And I came across the scripture. Let my praise be like the incense. And the raising of my hands like the evening sacrifice. And he told me, he said, next time you get in church. When you when you praise him, just pray. And, and, and I held my hands up like this. And when I was praying, and that song was playing. And I could just see my prayers like in a smoke. And then when I raised my hands like the evening sacrifice, as soon as I raised my hand, it all started. Because I was never able to raise my hand in church. I was always scared somebody was looking at me or who does he think he is raising his hands? I know what he did last summer. I know what he did last night. Who, is, who are you to raise your hand? I was like, you know, who am I not to raise my hand? God's going to pour it out on me. It's not rained from heaven. The, the Holy Spirit is from within. You want mine like it. Everybody stand. You, does yours want to be like mine? We're going to open this altar up and we're just going to, 
in a, in a few minutes, we're just going to have a Holy Ghost party. You're going to get what you came for. But right now, is there anyone here that, that feels like I, I, I've been called and I know I've showed up. I know I've come to the dinner, but I want I want to put on that, that armor. I want to put on my wedding suit. I want to know. I don't want to hear those words. I never knew you. If, there's any, if you just want to renew that, come on up here. Heavenly Father, you see her. You know her heart. She wants to give it all to you right now, Lord. All of it. You. Lord, touch her. Mark her. Let her know that she has a place. Her name is in that book. The Lamb's Book of Life. For all of eternity. The name of Jesus. Touch her right now. Bottle those tears up. Bottle those tears up. Holy Ghost, fill her. Fire the Holy Ghost on her body right now. More, Lord. More, Lord. Let her breathe blow. Holy Spirit, blow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good job. Bless you, Lord. Fill it. Whatever it is. Whatever it is you got to let go of. You know what it is. It's on top of your mind. Repent of it. Just to yourself. Just to you and God right now. Repent of it and let him know it's over. And he knows your heart. If he knows it's over, you're free right now in the name of Jesus. Freedom. Freedom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's already happened. It's already happened. The favor is in your life. Father, God's been dealing with you very recently. He's opened your eyes. The scales have come off your eyes, and you see something that needs to change in your life. You're not here by accident. Like Jesus said, no man comes to me unless the Father sends him or her. That's you. So anything attacking this life, anything attacking this girl, this woman of God, she's marked now. She's here. Holy Spirit, go inside her. Fill her lungs, Lord. Burn it out. It's going to come out more than that tear. More than that tear. It's going to come out. Holy Spirit, touch her right now. In the name of Jesus, fire the Holy Ghost through her body.
every dark chamber in her car, every dark chamber in her life. We turn the yeah, lights on. Yeah, when something's in her right now. You have nowhere to hide. See? Get off the back. Release. Release. Burn it out right now. Turn the heat up. Turn the heat up.
Be life, life, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All of it. All of it. Big, 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 to heal people. Lord, use these mouth to pray for people. Use these eyes to see the kingdom in your eyes. Use these ears to hear you, Lord. Lord, use his heart in the name of Jesus. Fill him with your Holy Spirit. Fill him with your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, Lord, touch him. Touch him. Raise your hands. Raise your hands and pray to him. Fire. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Fire the Holy Ghost through his body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Touch him, Lord. Mark him. Mark him, Lord. Use him in your kingdom in a mighty way. Raise his mantle. Oh, there it comes. There it comes. You feel that? That's Jesus. Did you feel that? That's Jesus in you. He loves you. He's got his spirit in you. The same spirit of God is inside of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Jesus, I love you. I want to live for you. I want to live with you in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go pray for your mama. Awesome. <laughs> Uh 
Get off her throat right now in the name of Jesus. Have a good night. Rivers of living water from a belly right now. Rivers of living water from a belly. Go. Hold. Holy Spirit, get her. Here it is. He said, it'll flow. So good. A mighty rushing river. River. There it is. Come on. Get it out. Spirit of doubt. That little bit of doubt you're trying to bring in her right now, you need her too. I'm not just going to stop her freedom tonight. You're going to go. In the name of Jesus. Get off of her. All fear goes. Fear of man, go. She is victorious. She will walk in victory. She abides in the shadow of the Almighty God and you can't have her anymore. In the name of Jesus, release her right now. Go. All that goes right now. Release. Touch me. Fight for your girl right now in the name of Jesus. There it comes. There it comes. Freedom. Freedom. We got you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so thank you. Mm-hmm. I was wondering who was me and T. Oh yeah, great. God healed you already. 
measure on our monitoring thing. I'm the one that never really does much and usually back up. I don't I like it. I don't 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 like it. Like what you're doing, because you're not doing much of anything. Yeah, just all on way. Tuesday. All of it comes off of right now. In the name of Jesus. Right, right, right. It's not even a sickness. It's an unclean spirit that's attacking you, that's showing, that's coming up as, as negative on your reports. You're an unclean spirit, you leave her. God, you're going to change these doctor reports. You're going to change these medical records. You're going to change these issues. She's a child of God and she will be clean. You're not going to have her anymore. You're not going to have her anymore. Yeah, I know. That's why I feel. It's awesome that she came back. When God wants you done with that, right now, that's what's stopping you. Because you're like, in your heart, you know you're not going to stop. So what? So you take it to the grave. So you just want to get two more years. So what? Don't let that stop you. Because when God's ready for you to take it out, you wake up one day and you'll be like, this is disgusting. Don't bring that. Just live your life victorious. Don't worry about the sin. God will take them when they're done. When you're yep. done with them, when he's done with you smoking, yep. he'll take them. They'll either take you or take a cigarette. One of the two is going to happen, no matter what. So don't let the cigarette stop you back to you. Break through this, regardless of those cigarettes. Right now, in the name of Jesus, touch her. Touch her. She is real. She knows okay. she's real. Go. You liar. You've been lying to her about these cigarettes. You tell her that she won't get a breakthrough. No, she can't. She can't. Yes, freedom is now. Don't put it on your plate. That's not on your plate. You're pure. You're pure. You're pure Lamb of God. You're in the Lamb Book of Life. All the life. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously? Oh no. <laughs> Sometimes and I see some of the stuff that goes on and stuff like, and I'm like, drive safe.
Everybody here is going to score it. And if there's somebody, somebody that doesn't have a score, yeah. I'll, see, I'll see you. I'll see some things. Come on, bud. I did some tax, Come on, girls. I don't try to Yes, please. Okay. You know the. Do you see me in the one in the chat? I know all the time. I didn't know that was your last name. That's me in the middle. That's my son. The Hollywood star. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time I met him in Altamont. Mm -hmm. He gave me the biggest pair of those. Yeah. I think it's a kind of line. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just some suplexes. I know, yes. Yeah. Well, you can do that Get off of him right now in the Get off his back. Get off his mind. Confusion, you confuse him. One minute he's thinking God, the other minute he's thinking war. Less of a war, more of God, more of the spirit. Hold it as close to him right now in the middle. More of Break them right now, and you pick up the pieces. Break him, Lord, and you pick up the pieces of what's left and give it back to him. Let him start his life.
fire the Holy Ghost on him right now. Freedom. Freedom. Fire right now. Fire right now. Fire right now. You're not going to take this out. You're going to go. Spirit of anger, you're going to. Something put down this fire. We're not going to let you put out this fire anymore. Put some spirit. Peace. Here it comes. Come on. Come on. Spirit spouse that's been on them, any spirit spouse that thinks you owe them and have a piece of him, you don't. The child of the living God, the property of Jesus Christ and that, you need him right now. You can't have him anymore. You can't have him anymore. Touch him, Lord. Take him. Fight for your Love on you, Lord. Give me the Father's love right now. The Father's love.